Okay, with number two, it says the multiplication is defined to produce on CX, CX10 instead of CX1, CX2 with the usual addition on R2. Uh, are the eight conditions satisfied and uh, this is similar to example one that I worked out before this recording Ben can you hear me uh, we need to check each one of these eight conditions which defines a vector space so uh, why don't we start with condition number one so condition number one Uh, x plus y so that's x1 x2 uh, addition is not affected so you add the corresponding components of the vector oops Sorry, this is y x2 plus y2. And y plus x. And uh, when we add, of course, we get the same thing. So first condition is satisfied. Let's go to the second condition. Which is uh, x plus y plus z and x plus y plus z okay um, this is so these are vectors so x is x1 x2 and r2 y1 y2 plus z1 z2 so here the addition implies what I did above and when I add it to this I get We add the corresponding components. Okay, uh, let's see. Well, I could say here uh, this is the same thing as x1, x2 plus y1, y2 plus z1 z2 and I could group them differently so uh, this right because the second part is uh, y1 plus z1 and y2 plus z2 so I get x plus vector y plus vector z so yes the second condition is satisfied let's go to the third condition which is x plus 0 vector if it gives me vector x so this is x1 y1 plus 0 0 sorry remove the vectors here so I get x1 y1 which is the same thing as x so 3 is satisfied 4 I'm using a different color on every condition so you can separate it from the original condition so this is x plus 
uh, minus x if there exists an x that gives me zero and yes there is obviously uh, if I call x to be uh, oh why did I call this y1 x2 uh, x2 okay uh, back to here so x1 x2 if I call negative x negative x1 negative x2 and I add them I indeed get 0 0 which is vector 0 so yes fourth condition is satisfied let's go to the second condi the fifth condition if the scalar multiplication on x would give me x so this is 1 times x1 x2 well according to how multiplication is defined here uh, it works on the first component as regular multiplication but then the second component gets you 0 so if I apply this here according to the way it's defined I would get x1 0 uh, now uh, that does not equal vector x so that means the fifth condition is not satisfied fifth condition no let's go to the sixth condition and that is for some scalars c1 and c2 when i operate in on vector x uh, do i get c1 times c2 x for some scalars c1 and c2 so let's take any scalars c1 and c2 uh, the left hand side c1 c2 x would equal c1 c2 times x1 x2 yeah and according to this condition It distributes on the first one just fine but then on the second one we get 0 c1 times 0 let's write it as c1 times 0 and uh, what I could do here uh, I could rewrite this as c1 the last one times c2 x1 oops component x1 and c1 0 right and these in brackets and I could factor out c1 and I get c2 x1 0 uh, but c2 x1 times 0 is just c2 vector x and here's C1 so yes condition number six is indeed satisfied condition number seven uh, for some scalar C does cx plus y equals cx plus cy? Well, let's find out. Um, now, cx plus y equals c. x1, x2 plus y1 y2 so this would equal c uh, plus y2 and now the way multiplication is defined it get me zero it gets me zero on the second component and c x1 plus y1 on the first component 
let's see what the right hand side is cx plus cy so this is c times x1 plus c times y1 plus uh, oh, sorry x1 x2 y1 y2 now operate with c uh, operate with c on the first component we get c1 x1 and gets me zero on the second component plus same thing here c let me answer my student here really quick actually let me finish the step c there's no one here c y1 and it gets me zero on the second component and then when i add these i get c1 x1 plus there's no one cx1 plus cy1 and zero and if i factor out the c i get x1 plus y1 comma zero uh, which indeed is the same yes this is the same as this so that means condition number seven is satisfied okay let's check uh, the last condition number eight which is c1 plus c2 x c1 x c2 x okay condition number eight let's switch to color should we pick now uh, this guy I guess okay 8 so uh, in 8 for some scalars c1 plus c2 x do we get uh, c1 x plus c2 x well let's check the left will be c1 plus c2 x1 x2 so we get as uh, the way that it distributes it gets me zero on the second guy and it gets me c1 plus c2 x1 and uh, which is by the way c1 x1 plus c2 x1 and zero okay let's see what the left is the left c1 x plus c2 x would get me c1 x1 oh, sorry x1 x2 plus c2 x2 x1 x2 and the way this distributes it get me c1 x1 here and zero on the second the way it's defined plus same thing here c2 x1 on the first zero on the second addition is regular so that's c1 x1 plus c2 x2 zero and if we look oops Just waiting for the writing to come back. Uh, C2, X1, and 0. And so this would be C1, X1, plus C2, X1, 0. And uh, we can see indeed that this result is the same exact thing as this result. So, yes condition number eight is satisfied so therefore uh, the uh, fifth condition is not satisfied so this doesn't qualify to be a vector space uh, that does it